We want this to be as engaging and interactive as possible. So please, if you have any questions, submit them uh, at any time. We'll do our best to answer them here on air, but we also have a few folks behind the scenes that will help us answer questions as well. And with that, we will get started. So you want to take it away and start the introductions? Sure. Good afternoon. I'm Ilemi Ofogba. I am an associate director in the Working Professionals Program, and I uh, deal with specifically evening MBA students. Hi, I'm Drew Egan. I'm an evening MBA student, class of 2020. Uh, I work at SunTrust Bank, and uh, I've got, I'm married, have uh, three kids under the age of five. Hi, I'm Emily Ani. I'm an evening MBA student graduating 2019, and I'm an operations business analyst at Home Depot. All right. So let's kick this off with the first question um, for you, Ilami. That's, what is the cadence of the evening MBA program in terms of when they're in class and the workload of assignments? Sure. So the Evening MBA program is designed for a culture of learning. That, um, and this uh, helps to create flexibility in the program. So the typical cadence of the program is taking two courses, that's six credits per semester uh, for a duration of eight semesters. Okay. And what was the uh, Oh, and just in terms of um, you know, class assignments, mm -hmm. workload, that sort of thing, yes. what can students expect? So um, you could expect to get uh, at least one assignment per class. Uh, that includes readings and discussions per week. Okay. And in terms of your experience, how have you seen in terms of how much time you have to dedicate to the actual being in class and then time outside of class, whether it's for assignments or group projects? So it changes class by class. Um, you're in class typically about six hours a week for your uh, two evening classes. Um, some classes and weeks are going to be a little lighter than others, or maybe you just have some articles to read before the next week's class. We do do a lot of group assignments in the program, um, and again, some classes are heavier in that than others. So typically, if you're working on a project, maybe you'll meet in person with your team another evening that week, or you know, make some time on the weekends. We also do a lot of virtual meetings. So it can vary from just maybe an extra hour dedicated to reading uh, for each class outside, or if you're really working on a big assignment or group thing, maybe you need three hours that week to dedicate to a bigger assignment. I'd say the same thing. I'd, I'd echo that. Um, you know, two classes a week, 6.30 to 9.30 p.m., so three hours each. And then if you allocate on average about another six hours for the assignments or meeting with your team, I think that's pretty good on average. Yeah, on average. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. And one of the questions I know that we get a lot with our working professional students is, you know, the balance of this, if my workload shifts one mm -hmm. semester to the next, how do I adapt that with my coursework? So I know we offer flexibility in the program to either accelerate or decelerate. Can you talk right. a little bit about that? Sure. So students have the options to accelerate and even de decelerate the program. Um, and you can accelerate in the program by taking what's known as ACE courses, ACE electives. ACE is an acronym for Accelerated Course Electives. And what this is, is basically regular three credit electives um, that are offered in a condensed format of three to four weeks. Um, and so we also have non-traditional, what's known as non-traditional courses. Um, and this is, uh, one of them includes a Washington campus that's one week in DC, and that's three credit elective um, taken care of in a week. And then we also have what's known as a directed study, which is an independent study, um, and it doesn't require you to come on campus. And then you can also choose to decelerate the program at any point by choosing to take just one class or no classes at all, uh, with the understanding that if you do decelerate in the program, then um, that could um, extend your graduation date. Okay. Have either of you taken advantage of any of these opportunities and flex the schedule? So I haven't done an ACE uh, class yet, but I would, one, one thing that I'd add to that is just the flexibility of the professors. I feel like uh, the professors understand that you're in work all day and uh, if you have a workload or work trip you need to take or that sort of thing, they're, they're pretty understanding. It's great to let them know ahead of time. Uh, an example of that even was when we had our, our third son um, in the middle of semester, this last semester, um, right before midterms. And, and you know, I let both professors know, and they, they both said, you know, you could take the midterm early or late or whatever you need to do, and, and they were very great to work with. So I didn't necessarily 
put anything on hold or, and, and I haven't done any of the ACE classes yet, but uh, working with the professors is, is, has been great. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I've had to take advantage of, and most people I know have had to at some point either ask to take a final exam early or late or you know push a deadline earlier or later based on uh, family things going on, based on work trips, things like that, and they're always very accommodating. Um, I haven't taken an ACE yet, but I'm either going to take an ACE or do the Washington campus in my last year. Um, still deciding between the two, but I'll definitely be taking advantage of one of those. Terrific. Okay, and one of the questions we had submitted by one of the, the folks who registered early was um, around work commitments. You know, if I have to travel a lot for work, what does that mean or how does that impact the program if I have to miss classes? How does yeah. the program sure. accommodate or not? Yeah, now we recognize that you are working professionals and um, have busy schedules. So although we have um, flexibility in the program, um, participation is a key component of your grades in class. So if you do have to miss a class for any reason, um, you just want to let your professor know ahead of the class um, so that you can work on making up for what you may have missed. Yeah, and obviously, you know, there's a little flexibility here and there. If you think you're going to miss half the classes in the semester, that's probably a different type of conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd love to hear from the two of you about the, the team projects. So it's an MBA, it's business school, there are a lot of team projects. How much time do you spend on team projects and how do you manage team projects when you all have jobs during the day? Uh, so I think every class I've taken has had a team project. Uh, some of them will just have one big culminating one at the end of the semester. Some of them you'll have like a weekly case that you're reading and preparing for the next week and you're literally meeting with your team every week. Uh, every team does it a little differently and you guys just have to be really upfront about your schedule and if you're open to driving somewhere to meet in person or if you'd rather meet virtually, if you're willing to come to campus or someone's house. Uh, typically everyone is really understanding of schedules and work-life balance because they're all in the exact same situation you are. Um, if it's a bigger project, again, it might be you know three hours a week broken up between a meeting or two, some virtual, some in person to work on it. And then if it's maybe a big culminating one at the end of the semester, maybe you have to carve out you know a couple of extra hours on a weekend. So it really just depends on how you guys work. Um, and if you want to decide to all tackle different pieces of that project separately and come together, or if you'd rather kind of have working sessions all together. So there's a lot of flexibility um, and You'll, you'll figure out the scheduling as you go with your teammates. Um, in my undergrad in family psychology, I, d I didn't do any teamwork. It was a lot of paper writing. I think there was one class that I took where we, we, we built a, a project together. So I've, I've really enjoyed that aspect of the mm -hmm. MBA, being able to work with the team. And, and I think it's just the, the team aspect is cool to, to really take a step back and look at uh, how much you can accomplish as a team. Um, you, you divide up the work into, into different things and sometimes as a team you might decide to take something that you're not so good at so you can develop that skill. Uh, other times you might decide, you know, I'm already really good at Excel or whatever that skill is and you, you focus more on the, the uh, data part of it. Um, but it's great to collaborate and uh, it's interesting also because some semesters, your some of your first few semesters, you actually get assigned to teams. It kind of takes the, the question out of it, here's your team, you know, and you, you learn to work with the team. And um, in other semesters, you get to choose them, and there's, mm -hmm. there's some flexibility as you go. So it's, it's great just to have that, that team dynamic. And each team's different. Um, I've had teams that say, you know, I don't want to meet in person. We're already here twice a week. Let's meet virtually. And, and others that say, you know, let's... Uh, even though it's 9.30 at, at night, let's stay another couple hours and, and knock out the assignment at the end of the day. So mm -hmm. there's you know, a lot of collaboration and flexibility there. Yeah, and you end up uh, just in hearing how your teammates are working through a problem or if they are really good at you know, some skill set that you're not getting the opportunity to watch them work and learn from them. Uh, you get a lot more out of the project than just, hey, I did the assignment, we turned it in. You really learn a lot from your peers in the process. So in talking with um, some students, we've had previous web chats on impact, which is the, you know, talking about the client-based projects that you guys work on. And one of the things that came out of there was just how um, supportive um, the team is, your classmates are, and how that actually affords 
you guys a lot of flexibility. And so when you're working on those team projects, if you have a baby or something like that, and you maybe need to go off the grid for a day or two, you have the support of your team members um, to rely on as well. How have you seen that in play? Absolutely. I, I feel like we, we each have our strengths and our weaknesses, and it's great to, to be able to turn to each other. And, and uh, you know, that is a great part of, of, of business anyway, is being able to communicate and um, work as a team, identify goals, and, and kind of lift where we stand to be able to, to do the best we can. Um, and sometimes pick up the slack for someone that, that uh, is struggling or, you know, be on the other end of that as well. Mm -hmm. With um, changing gears a little bit, with obligations obviously outside of your school work and outside of your professional uh, responsibilities, how important is it to get family buy-in before pursuing an MBA? I think it's definitely important, uh, whether it's your family, significant other, your roommate that you're really close to, those people that you spend a lot of time with and that are, have invested a lot in you making sure that they um, are supportive of you and that they kind of understand that this is going to impact your free time and it's going to impact, you know, instead of hanging out, watching TV after dinner, like you probably have some reading to do, little things like that uh, impact the people around you. And so having a support system around you that is lifting you up instead of maybe making you feel bad that you had to say no to another dinner or something, not that it happens all the time, but it definitely makes the load feel a lot lighter when the people around you are, are supporting you through the process. I agree with that. I, I feel like it's very much a, a team or a family decision. Um, I know for my wife and I, I, I feel like oftentimes, and I know she feels like this too, that uh, you know, it's as much or more of a sacrifice for her than it is for me you know, being here at class where she's taking on additional uh, duties at home and, and work. And uh, um, that said, it's, it's so great to have a teammate um, you know, whether it's family members or roommates or whoever it might be, to be able to, to have someone cheering you on and, uh, you know, to help you help you through it. But I think it's just having that open communication up front and, and kind of setting the guidelines and, and uh, keeping that common vision and goal uh, at the end of mind of, of why we're doing this and, and uh, you know, the great good that it's going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's a great, just to add on, just to, that's a great point that uh, they've made. Um, you want to make sure you negotiate this with your family members ahead of time because it is a lot of time spent on homework, meeting with your teens for assignments, sometimes it's on a weekly basis, um, and then everything else that's going on um, in their life. So this is something you definitely want to speak about to your family and friends and negotiate that in the front end. So uh, eliminate there's the negotiations that happens on the front end, mm -hmm. but then once they're in the program, that might be a different story. Can you talk a little bit about how we try to integrate families and, and their support system into the program? Sure, absolutely. So, um, like I said, we have uh, we try to create a, a, a center for learning, but also we know that we need to incorporate families into the program. Um, and one of the ways that we do, we do that throughout the year. Um, starting in the fall uh, with a kickoff celebration at the Commerce Club. So uh, people starting in August will have a kickoff celebration at the Commerce Club. And then throughout the year, we have different activities and events. Uh, we have what's called Fun on the Green, which is here on campus. And as it suggests, it's fun on the green. And uh, you can bring the little ones and there's a bouncy house and just a photo booth and activities for the kids. We also have a roller derby event and a baseball, um, Atlanta Braves baseball out in. Um, so these things happen throughout the year where we try to incorporate the families. Have you guys taken advantage, seen, seen have the, any um, help from that and making the, your families kind of feel like they're on this journey with you and not just maybe missing you when you're spending time away? Yeah, I, I know I definitely have. Um, the fun on the green was a lot of fun. I, you know, our, our two boys, uh, our two older ones just had a blast, um, you know, with the face painting and the bouncy house and, and winning prizes after prizes. It was so fun. <laughs> um, and then even for the roller derby, we had we found a babysitter for the older ones and, and brought our, our two-month-old, uh, put him in his little bumbo seat so he could get a front row seat and, and watch the <laughs> derby too. And it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. It's it great to, to have those types of events that um, you know, others can come join you and celebrate on. Yeah, it was made clear to us from day one that this was, they wanted to include other parts of our lives in the program. 
we've always been told we can bring, you know, friends, spouses, kids to certain events. Uh, everyone's very welcoming of that, both from the program side and then from your cohort. Um, I know a lot of spouses in the program have all gotten really close to each other because they have attended events, they've been invited along to like leadership things too, like they've really included them, they're part of orientation if they want to be. So they've kind of all bonded and that creates another support system for the people that are kind of left behind when we're at class. And then for us, they're more understanding of what we're doing. Um, and then outside of the school sponsored things, you know, you get this whole friend group and you're encouraged to, to bring these other people that are important to you in your life along. So it's not something that you're separating them from. You really get to include your family, anyone you want to. Just to add on to what you both have said, um, when you enter the program, you are automatically part of the student club. For the evening program, it's called GEVBA. Um, and GEVBA, through your social chairs, uh, put on uh, a lot of events, and some of those also include family events, right? So that's the many ways in which your families can get involved. And GEVBA stands for Gwizwara Evening. Gwizwara Evening MBA. MBA, Club. perfect. Mm -hmm. Great. So you're working full-time jobs. You've got friends, family responsibilities. Outside of that, you're coming to class a couple nights a week. You have work assignments, group projects. When you're not in class, how do you balance work, personal life, school life? Uh, time management will be your friend. Whether you're <laughs> good at that now or not, you're going to get better at it. Um, you do have to stay on top of it. I mean, if you really want to keep your other parts of your life going well and still have time for social things, still have time to work out, still have time to just do nothing every once in a while, um, you do have to put a little effort into being organized and scheduling out some time. Uh, it sometimes makes the spontaneous plans a little harder to accommodate, um, but it's totally doable. Like I absolutely still have a social life both within and without the program. People have gotten married and have kids during the program, like especially if you have some support um, from those around you, you can definitely do it. Um, you're going to want to you know, be looking at the syllabus, like kind of know what's on your plate for the next week be on top of your work calendar, but it's, it's manageable for sure. Yeah, I mean, it definitely comes at some sacrifices and, and the time management is key. I think uh, one of the best things for me, I'm oh, sorry, um, was uh, I've got a great manager at work and, and he actually recommended a book to read before I started the program called Essentialism, which really focuses on uh, being able to say no to, to great opportunities when they're not the most important opportunities at the current time. So. Um, and along with that, I, I took some time before starting the program to really take a step back and evaluate what, the, what my values and goals were for each aspect of my life. And I remember identifying, you know, like five key things like work, family, you know, personal life, school, uh, you know, faith or religion, and being able to identify what the most important values in each of those things were because, um, you know, you can't do everything. That's, I think that's the thing. It's one of the main things we learn in this program. That's one of the, you know, lessons that's not a class is just how to be able to do the things that are most important and the things you care about. But once I was able to kind of take that step back and, and say, what, what do I want out of an MBA? Um, well, there's the networking, there's the actual education, there's being able to check the box on the MBA itself. You know, there's all these different things that I wanted out of it. I was able to prioritize and say, you know, what, what's more important for me? Is it the learning? Is it the networking? Is it just getting this done? And once I identified those things, it helped me to be able to, uh, when I face those, those questions of, you know, should I stay in network? Should I do extra homework? I, I already knew what I wanted to do. And the same thing, I did the same thing with work and being able to say, you know, do I want to advance in my career during the MBA? Um, you know, or just kind of do the minimum. And, and it's, it's just having that kind of um, conversation with yourself and writing down those goals, I think that help kind of give me some peace of mind to say, you know, it's going to be hard, yeah. uh, but, you know, just like Emily said, uh, you know, we can do this and, and you just got to kind of plow forward. What kind of trade-offs have you had to make? Every day. <laughs> 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 um, I think for me, being able to kind of what I said before, that spontaneous aspect of, hey, we want to go away this weekend, let's just get in the car and go, or, hey, we're going out for dinner tonight, can you come? Before, it was really easy to just be like, I've got nothing going on, sure. And now, even if you're not in class, there's that trade-off of, kind of thought I had scheduled this time for homework tonight, or I had said I was going to hang out with my family tonight because I couldn't two nights this week. 
and uh, being able to prioritize those things does make it easier to say yes and no. Um, there was an adjustment of just, I can't cook dinner at home two nights a week and figuring out that, or like, you know, if working out's really important to you, you have to like figure out how to fit that into your schedule differently. Um, so I think the, it feels like a really big trade-off, especially first semester when you're, you're not used to being in school for a while and you have to figure out uh, how to dedicate time to studying instead of maybe those things you were doing previously. And then once you kind of have those honest conversations, it feels much, much easier as you go. But I mean, yeah, every day there's a, there's a little something that you kind of have to readjust your focus to making this a, a priority over some other thing that maybe sounds more fun in the moment. <laughs> yeah, I love what you said. I, th I think that's spot on. Um, I know for me, uh, and everybody's different, but I feel like for me the biggest trade-off is being able to let go of uh, doing my best in everything. Because um, I like to excel at work, I like to you know, be very engaged at home, I like to do great in school, and, mm -hmm. and to be able to realize that you know, that's one of the biggest trade-offs, at least for me, is I, I, I've just realized I can't do all of those things to the, to the level I'd like, and so just being able to be okay with that is probably the biggest trade-off. Um, but I think even uh, very specifically at work, being able to you know maybe not take on as many extra projects as I'm, I normally would like to to, to really mm -hmm. kind of go above and beyond has been a, a main trade off, and then and then st significantly again for me I know that everybody listening today you know doesn't have isn't necessarily married or have have kids but um, you know being able to make those trade offs of you know helping the the kids understand that you know where I'm going and why and how this is going to help the family and helping my my wife understand that you know this is you know, this is good, um, and, and she's usually the one telling me that, which is great, but um, mm. the, the thing that we often say is just like, you know, two and a half years are going to go by either way. You know, we can make these trade-offs now and these sacrifices now, um, and, you know, two and a half years from now we'll have an MBA and, and a lot of great experience. So, so you, you talked a little bit about um, the work ac aspect of it, which is a great transition, because we want to talk about how important it is to have your employer support and employer buy-in. And Elmi, mean, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. um, when someone is thinking about pursuing an evening MBA or they're applying, at what stage do they need to let their employer know um, to, to see if they have that support? Sure. I think you need to let your employer know on the onset. As soon as you decided that this is what you want to do, it's a good idea to speak to your employer. And the reason being is because you may want to negotiate upfront um, the ability to leave early, to depart early from work, at least two uh, days a week to make it uh, to class on time. Um, and then some of your employers may have a tuition reimbursement program, so you want to look into that and find out um, if you're eligible and what that is. So those are just some of the reasons why I think it's a good idea to mm -hmm. negotiate and speak to your employer up front. Uh, because again, we talked about trade-offs and there's some trade-offs that you're going to have to make uh, while you're in the program with work and your co-workers. And it's good for that reason to have your employer and especially your supervisor uh, buy-in. Drew, you mentioned you have a very supportive manager. Mm -hmm. um, one of the trade-offs you make is not taking on extra projects. Talk to me about that relationship with your manager and how that you know, support helps you get through the program. Well, it's been wonderful, and, and, and I do feel like I'm in a unique situation in some ways. I, I think a lot of managers are supportive, but uh, I've just got a great manager who um, ha shares a similar vision. And in fact, I, I let him know pretty early on, probably about two years ago, that I was interested in this. And even at that point, we started looking at where I would need to be to be able to, uh, what type of position I'd want to be in to be able to handle the workload and the t kind of tasks I was doing. And so we started you know, making a game plan from there. Um, I know that not everybody's as as as, as um, you know a optimal situation, and I was pretty nervous telling other coworkers about doing the MBA. You know, I had some apprehension about wh what they would think and what that would mean. And but I overall, I'd find I found that it's um, that they have been pretty supportive, and the tuition reimbursement for my company has been great, and, and that sort of thing too. Yeah, it makes a huge difference um, to be honest with your employer that you're interested in doing this. And then having their support just makes your life so much easier. Um, I actually transitioned jobs since I started the program and have been lucky that with both of my managers and teams, they've been very supportive. Um, 
I think a big thing is knowing that, especially on those days that you have class, but other times too, because you're going to have homework and team meetings, knowing that you have to put some stopping points in at your day. Like there kind of has to be a, I have to leave, I have to go to campus. And if you're really trying to get the most out of your class experience, you can't be looking at your work email, you know, constantly the whole time during lecture. So putting those boundaries in place for yourself and for your, your manager or your team to understand, like, I'm going to have to take this time for myself will make you get a lot more out of the classroom experience. Um, and then when I was interviewing for my new position, I told them during the interview that this was something I was in already, so it was a non-negotiable, so that their expectations were set at a realistic place for me too. And they've been totally accommodating great. So just the more upfront you can be early on, I think it'll make it better for everybody. One thing I'd add there actually is, um, kind of like you're saying, being upfront very early on, and, and even you know for the people that are probably listening maybe aren't in the program yet, uh, most likely, um, to be able to start moving in that direction and kind of doing whatever you can to make your, your position more flexible. I know many uh, great companies are, they, they try and have work-life ba life balance and many of them will consider letting you work at home once a week and that sort of thing. And so um, that's that's been great for me during the program, uh, already having a somewhat flexible schedule and to be able to work from home some days and cut out the travel yeah, time makes and a big difference. yeah be able to get the homework done um, and y so what I'd say what I'm trying to say is you know build that flexibility in and then also prove yourself at work that you can that your you know boss or manager can trust you that you're gonna get the work done whether you're at home or wherever you're at it or if it's later at night or early in the morning mm -hmm. or whatever it is so one of the concerns we hear, I think, from prospective students a lot is, well, I don't know I want to tell my manager yet because then they're going to think that I'm, I'm going to leave the company or I'm, I'm doing this so I can move on. Um, but in actuality, a, a benefit of the program is that you're able to learn in the classroom something that you can then apply the next day on the job. Have you experienced that, being able to take some of those new skills or knowledge and then incorporate it into what you're doing on in your uh, in the work environment? Yeah, I definitely have um, in, in both positions. And I think too, it's it's a two and a half year program. Y I, you know, maybe you go a little faster or slower, but even if they kind of look at it as, oh, does this mean you're gonna leave me? You know, you're stuck, you're here for two and a half years. So it's not like this immediate, you know, I'm, I'm leaving. So you might've transitioned in that time anyway. But I think also if you can sell it as I'm trying to be better at my job, I'm trying to learn and bring value to my position and to this company. Um, and you'll definitely get opportunities to use what you've learned in the classroom. I did first semester. Uh, I had like an epiphany in our marketing class one day and was so excited to come in and tell my manager the next day. And they utilized that thing that I was able to convey to them that I had learned, you know, on a random Wednesday in a classroom. So you'll definitely have those moments. And I think if you can bring in what you're learning, it'll kind of make your manager see if they are feeling iffy about it that you're you're helping them like you're bringing the benefits of what you're learning to the company um, and hopefully kind of mitigate any potential negative feelings there would be that's a cool example um i forgot the question for a second but i will think of it <laughs> what what you're able to um oh what yeah, you're apply. learning and then a bit, uh, yeah. turn around and apply it on the job yeah no, I've, the, the marketing i think has been fun i'm I, i'm only this is my third semester so i've only taken five or six classes so far mm -hmm. and, and into my additional ones, but the marketing and uh, also even the accounting when we have our uh, earnings calls to be able to understand a lot more of those numbers, um, I think it's been really cool to see that. So we've, we've talked about the benefit um, that we receive, you guys receive from your, your classmates to having that support on the team projects. Um, but outside of that, we also have a cohort structure. You want to talk a little bit about why we have a cohort structure? Sure. And actually, Emily, both Emily and Drew um, touched on it earlier. Um, we have a cohort structure because we want to build that relationship and that bond very early on in your program. So at least for your first year, you go through the program in a lockstep uh, process. Um, and then by having students work in teams, that helps to build trust. So you have that shared experience, you have the relationship, you've created those bonds that uh, in most cases can last a lifetime, and so, and you have that trust. So as you move on through the program, those things are already there. So your classmates represent a wide range of job functions, they come from a wide range of industries. Um, talk to us about the impacts of that on classroom discussion, on team projects. 
I love the diversity. I think it's it's great to be able to work with people who are in the realm of finance and consulting and, you know, from Home Depot to Delta to, to SunTrust and all sorts of different industries. Um, and uh, going back to kind of the cohort idea, I love the I love the, the friendships you make and the, and the network you make. Um, you know, you develop some close relationships with some of the teammates you have, but even just knowing that you, you kind of know some of these people that further down the road, you know, you know this person's interested in um, you know, consulting and, and, uh, or, or more of the finance realm. And so you can, I already feel like I, I can see the potential for the future to be able to bounce ideas off of the different people in the, in the cohort, mm -hmm. which is great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, during classroom discussions, during lecture, working with your team, you hear people with backgrounds and perspectives that are so different than yours. I've learned about companies and types of jobs that I had no idea existed before I started the program. And learning how they tackle a problem, learning how they view information is so insightful. Obviously, you're going to learn a lot from your professors, but I've learned just as much from just listening to my peers speak and tell us about their experiences or you know, tell us about a project they're working on at work. Um, it's really informative and the networking opportunities are huge within that you know you have people from so many different companies and backgrounds that you can definitely learn more and utilize down the road and everyone is like really well willing to help each other network or learn more so it's supportive and really opens a lot of doors you mentioned the networking opportunities um, beyond that how social is the cohort do you guys spend time together outside of class or um, do you are you able to build kind of bonds beyond just the, the professional? Um, our cohort is maybe too bonded. Uh, <laughs> we spend an absurd amount of time together. Um, we're almost two years in now, my, my class, and every weekend there's a group getting together. We've taken huge beach trips together. Um, I met my significant other in the program. I mean, you can make as much of it as you, as you want to. Um, there's always, you know, something going on and everyone, you're kind of given this group of, you know, 90 people that are kind of like-minded and driven and, you know, living in the area and you can, yeah, we've definitely bonded <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'd say the same thing. Uh, our group's really social um, and, and it, again, it kind of fits whichever values you're most interested in. If you're, if you're looking for the social aspect, it's there. If you're looking to volunteer and, you know, do types of things like this event today or, you know, bring new students in or um, you know you can get involved in the academic side the social side um, even student government like you may have seen in the past um, but yeah everybody's different I know for for my family we're actually having you know a, a fellow classmate and his his wife over for dinner at our house in a couple weekends from now so you know and and another uh, just a group of, of um, uh, classmates are planning a party at their house for everybody uh, coming up soon so it's pretty fun yeah, that's great. The bonds that you can build within your, your cohorts and among your classmates. Um, Elamie, one of the things we talk about is not only that bond with your mm -hmm. cohort, but also once you come here to Goizueta, you then are part of the larger Goizueta and Emory alumni network. How do we leverage our alumni um, and, and you know, bring them back into the fold right. so they, the, our current students benefit from right. them? So we have some of the most engaging alumni. Um, they're engaging and they're accessible. Um, one of the ways in which we leverage them is through our, our career management um, center. Uh, many of our alumni come in and sit on career panels. Um, and they also, we also have a mentor-mentee mentor program um, that current students take advantage of and um, alumni serve as their mentors. Um, and then there are other networking activities that are, um, that are uh, scheduled um, throughout the year. So that allows current students to network with alumni. And so there are a number of ways that um, you can network with alumni. And some of those are through the career, and, um, career network and also the alumni portal. Have you guys been able to leverage that larger Goizueta and Emory alumni network? No, for me, I haven't, uh, you know, done a lot since I haven't graduated and haven't right. really connected with too many. But um, that said, I, at my work at SunTrust, mm -hmm. I've, I've identified many of the people that have gone to Emory. So okay. I guess in that sense, I have, you know, at least made some connections mm -hmm. and asked about their experience or even finding fellow um, classmates who are, you know, a year or two older 
or who have recently graduated to hear about their experience. Mm -hmm. um, so not necessarily in the formal net network, sure, but, but in other ways, yeah. Yeah, starting out. You're only three semesters in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, the alumni network is huge, and they're everywhere. Um, every company I think you can think of, uh, you can you know check on LinkedIn and see connections based on Emory that way, which is great if you are a job hunting. Um, the Career Management Center can also always help put you in touch with alumni that are at a company you're interested in or in industries you're interested in. So they're very willing to help generally. Um, I did our, my international module this last spring in Paris, and there were Emory alumni in Paris that had gone through the program that came and met us for some of the events. So um, they're there, they want to talk to you, they're almost always willing to help. Uh, it's a really open community, and it's a huge community, so definitely leverage it if you get the chance. That's terrific. Yeah. That's a great story. I love that about meeting alumni in Paris. Yeah, it was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so outside of you know the academic, uh, and curricular aspects of the program and the, the network. There are a lot of other opportunities for you guys to engage in, and develop new skills. You know, there's student government, there's leadership academy, there's a whole range of activities. Um, what have you been able to take advantage of outside of the actual, you know, classroom curricular things? Um, I have done some of the leadership development stuff that they offer. They offer a huge range, um, some weekend events they have the like leader reaction course, um, lots of things to do there. Um, lots of close friends on the student government. There's um, different chairs you can sit on and things like that. Uh, um, and I completely just blanked on what I was gonna say. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. Um, I'd say the same thing, you know, the, the leadership reaction course was fun and the, the different leadership uh, classes and opportunities. Outside of that, I haven't done much and that's really just been kind of a choice. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, it's kind of a, uh, you know, fact of priorities, but that's that's what's cool about it is that those opportunities are there. So if that's what you're interested in, there's plenty of them. Um, switching gears a little bit, this one is for you, actually for all three of you, really. Um, I know one of the questions we get a lot is about the accessibility of the faculty. You know, are they just there to teach and I only see them, you know, in class or um, are they available outside? if I need a review session or um, for tutoring help or something like that. What's been your experience? Um, mine has been that the professors are remarkably available, um, some more than others, obviously. Um, I've had a couple that have given out their personal cell phone numbers so that if you're working with your team or working on a homework or something in the evening, you can shoot them a text or shoot them an email and they'll get back to you. Um, definitely review sessions on the weekends. Some of them just do it kind of standard procedure and some of them will do it if they get enough interest from the class. They really want to be supportive. They want you to succeed. They're not here to um, be overly harsh or weed you out of the program. Like they want to lift you up and, and see you do well. So they've really been engaged in our success and made themselves available to us that way. I think Emily said it very well. That's what I'd say as well. Um, I called uh, Professor Smith during the economics when I was trying to figure out some of the things and uh, on two different occasions actually. One of them he had, he had scheduled a time even though we weren't on campus anybody could call during this time frame and but even another time it was just on a Saturday afternoon working on uh, you know his final project to just get some insights and you know very great to work with is what I found. That's terrific. Uh, let me just add most of your professors will have office hours and this is um, indicated on the syllabus um, and then they also have TAs, as you guys alluded to. So the TAs are available to kind of help facilitate review sessions. So there are a number of ways that you can access your professors and get some help. With regards to tutoring, um, we don't have a, a tutoring service, so that's something you'll have to seek out on your own. Okay. As we wind down here, I just want to I would love to get your guys' um, feedback or impression on, on something that maybe surprised you about your time in the program. So Drew, you're a little bit earlier on. Um, Emily, you're, you're a little bit closer to graduating. Um, but something maybe coming in you thought you know, was going to be one way and it really, really is different than your expectations, either positive or negative. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, I was, I was surprised in some ways at how much I enjoyed um, the content and just being in school. Um, you know, it had been a while since I've been in school mm -hmm. and I, I, you know, I knew I wanted an MBA, but I didn't know how enjoyable it would be. 
um, and how valuable. I remember marketing. I'd never taken a marketing class before, and that was pretty eye-opening and a fun class, mm -hmm. um, and yet challenging. You know, I, I didn't know the answers. I didn't. I, I didn't know what marketing was, and and uh, thought it was pretty simple, but it's pretty complex. And so, surprised at that. Um, you know, there have been some challenges here or there that have been surprising of just, you know, the workload being more than I thought it would be or, um, you know, a professor that I don't quite just understand their, their method of, of teaching and, you know, trying to learn to adapt and be flexible there. Great. Yeah, yeah I'd say um, I think I was surprised by, like you said, how much I genuinely enjoy my time in the classroom. Obviously, there's going to be a class you don't love as much or just a bad day that you're having, but in general, the way the classes are structured because they're very discussion based and you get to learn so much from your peers. Um, I've genuinely enjoyed just learning more about um, the industries and what all these different people are doing perspective wise has really kind of opened my eyes um, and changed my view of maybe what I want my career path to look like down the road and less because of like a specific class that I took and more just being in this environment. It's really inspiring, really eye opening. Um, and it's not like a cutthroat environment. It's like incredibly warm and supportive and open. And I think I didn't maybe thought it would be like a little stuffier or something, business school. I did not go to business school in undergrad. So that was a very welcome surprise that it does not feel that way at all. That's one of the things, uh, just to add one more thing in there, I, l I liked uh, what you said, that there's a lot of opportunities for, um, you know, quick feedback it's encouraged in the program and one of the goals that I had in, in going and getting an MBA was to develop my leadership skills and you can take a class on leadership and mm -hmm. you know go to the leadership reaction course and those are great but it's nice just to be able to you know take turns leading out on a case that you're or an assignment you're working on um, asking for feedback getting that feedback and and really that open dialogue that you talked about you know with your peers I think has been surprising of you know you can, you can develop yourself a lot from that so it's a lot of Besides the knowledge in class, a lot of personal development that I think is possible too. Those are great insights, very useful. With that, I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. We don't have any more questions to tackle here and, I, and you guys, I think, provide a lot of really valuable feedback and insights for those who are thinking about the next step, whether that's um, with Goizueta or you know, to pursue an MBA or not. So I appreciate your time on the panel, all three of you. And um, if you have, any additional questions or anything like that, we'll are available to answer those uh, at any time. And just a reminder, uh, on the screen I'm showing upcoming deadlines. We have, do have a final application deadline uh, for the fall start, and that is on June 22nd. And so again, if you have any application deadlines or program deadlines, please reach out and we'll be happy to answer those. Thank you for your time and have a great afternoon.